Our guest today is the Commissioner of the Chicago Department of Transportation. He oversees a staff of 1,200 and a budget of more than $400 million. Our guest today spent more than 30 years with the Chicago Police Department, starting as a patrol officer and moving up the ranks to deputy superintendent. After his retirement from the police department in 2005, Mayor Daley selected him to head the Office of Management Accountability at the Chicago Department of Transportation. This office implemented new systems and, te and technologies to improve the delivery of city services. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the City Club of Chicago, Commissioner Tom Byrne. Commissioner? Thank you very much. I'm rather nervous, but Jay said have fun, so we'll get through this. Um, it's really an honor to be here today and to be selected to talk, um, but I'm gonna go through a couple more announcements in here in regards to uh, my family who are here and uh, my lovely wife, Ellen. Ellen. Uh, my oldest daughter, Dee, who I'm going to walk down the aisle on October 11th to stand in here. <laughs> school teacher for the public school system. My daughter, Carrie, a fourth generation police officer. <laughs> TJ, my son, who, who works at the Office of Management and Accountability, is a superintendent of Traffic Management Authority. Uh, my sister, Mary Ellen, <laughs> and her husband, Pat. Uh, my brother Dan and my sister-in-law Mary. My brother Larry and my sister Margaret. And daughter-in-law Beth McDermott. That's three other boys that belong to us couldn't be here today. They're all working, uh, Joe, Rob, and Tim. Uh, so uh, they wished us luck when we started this morning. So. Uh, we saw the baby, we saw Tim, and uh, everything was good. My wife's not nervous because the baby's with somebody that's important that won't, won't harm her, so. Um, and I have a staff. You can't do anything without a staff. And when I came in, uh, I guess I had the best opportunity of the world is, is that I really didn't know anything to anybody, and I wanted to pick a staff that could take us further and, dyna and do dynamic things. And I believe, I think I put the people together uh, that I did affirmatively through a lot of thought and a lot of actions in what I did. And when you read the book, Good to Great, they talk about building a bus. And I put a bus together, and every one of those people on the bus can drive the bus. And that's what we like to see. Uh, I want to start off by introducing Tom Powers, our first deputy. Vic Marino, our managing deputy. Bobby Ware, managing deputy. John McDonough, managing deputy. John Yonan, deputy commissioner. Luann Hamilton, deputy commissioner. Thanks, Luann. Bob McDera, man, uh, deputy commissioner. Mike Fellini. Uh, Randy Connor, <laughs> Deputy Commissioner Gibraltar Quinones, and Bill Cheeks. Um, if I forgot anybody, I, I say I'm, I'm a little nervous here, but um, I also want to talk about a fellow that uh, when we became police officers in 1970, we worked patrol cars together and we both arose to the ranks of the Chicago Police Department to become deputy superintendents. And, he was the first deputy superintendent to run the Office of Management Accountability in the police department. Uh, my good friend, Tony Chiesa. <clears throat> and my 30-year car guy that uh, doesn't, wants to talk about cars all the time and drive around in old cars is my good friend, Pete, uh, a neighborhood buddy. <laughs> and Brian Steele. Brian Steele was out in front of all of this at the beginning uh, we got proactive with the pothole situation. We were out in front of it. He was giving out daily alerts across the city 
telling us where our crews were at, and he's worked endlessly since I've been there as our IPO uh, officer. Brian, thank you. Lisa, I'm not going to forget you. Stand up, Lisa Rosario. Outside my wife, Lisa is the real boss. She maintains that calendar, and she makes all the appointments for us. She takes endless jobs and, and twists everything around so we can get everything done in the day. So, Lisa, thank you very, very much for your hard work. Um, when I became a police officer, I couldn't project that I could ever be the Commissioner of Transportation. Um, it's, an, it's an overwhelming position that was given me. Uh, the mayor has seen me over the years uh, do some work in, in certain situations. And when I first met him in 89, he started uh, in his campaign about school violence, and he's, he's still in the forefront of that. And I was a lieutenant in charge of a school unit that had in charge of 72 schools, and we had police officers in every high school. And he brought me in and was adamant about putting metal detectors into uh, the high schools. I carried that out. And that mission was very successful, and we made it a very, very safe school system. I have a lot, I've had a lot of jobs since. The mayor has always looked out for me, and uh, needless to say, he's the best mayor in the university. Uh, I just want to thank him for the confidence he has in me. Okay. Uh, the, what is CDOT? CDOT is the Chicago Department of Transportation. CDOT's core function is the design, construction, and maintenance of the public way in the city of Chicago. That includes streets, sidewalks, alleys, bridges, medians, and other areas in the public way. CDOT is also responsible for the enforcement of the city code uh, in the public way. We like to say if you walk on it, if you drive on it, or ride a bike on it, we're responsible for it. CDOT is the workforce of nearly 1,200 people, represented by 19 different unions. This includes engineering, in-house construction, and administrative staff. Our annual funding of approximately $400 million is provided by the federal, state, local, and private sources. As I said, we design and maintain streets sidewalks, alleys, and curbs and gutters. In 07, using a combination of CDOT in-house construction and private contractors, we completed 250 blocks of curb and gutter, 400 blocks of sidewalk, 530 blocks of street residential resurfacing, 150 blocks of alley repairs, and 1,400 speed humps. Quite an, quite an accomplishment for one year. CDOT also, main, also handles the maintenance of bridges in this great city. We are responsible for more than 300 bridges and viaducts of various types. Bridges are a critical component to our transportation system. Of, the 30, of, of these, 36 are movable bridges, more than any city in the world. In 07, we performed over 26,000 bridge lifts. Those were of the five bridges along the Calumet River serves a high volume of commercial traffic on the river. More than 1,400 of those lifts were made in the downtown bridges spanning the main and south branches of the river. We coordinate our spring and fall bridge lifts with boat storage companies to minimize the impact on traffic. More than 200 tradesmen are part of our in-house bridge maintenance crew. They perform critical maintenance and repairs on a daily basis. Our newest bridge is along North Avenue over the Chicago River, which was dedicated last week by Mayor Daly. It is the first of its kind, a hybrid suspension cable tied cable stayed bridge. It also provides two full traffic lanes in each direction, double the capacity of the old movable bridge it replaced. Before we even began to build a bridge, we built a temporary bridge right next to the construction site to carry busy North Avenue traffic through this $25 million project. CDOT is also responsible for all the signage in the city, 
In 07, we replaced over 120,000 signs. Over 8,000 were emergency signs, such as stop signs, do not enter signs, and one way. We have reduced the turnaround time to replace a missing emergency sign from five to seven days a few years ago to what is now 24 hours. And in some cases, the turnarounds is a matter of hours. Our public way inspectors make sure the sidewalks and alleys are functioning smoothly and that contractors work properly. CDOT manages the public way through an intensive permit system. Currently there, has, there are 30 inspectors. Our eyes and ears are in the public way. In 07, approximately 300,000 public way permits were issued. Our managing deputy, Vic Morano, has projected more than $3 million in fines in 08, despite the fact that we are 12 fewer inspectors than we had in 05. Mayor Daley prides himself on being one of the greenest mayors in the country. A major green initiative is the medians and boulevards. CDOT is responsible for the design, construction, and maintenance of these green spaces. Uh, we, near, we maintain nearly 80, 80 miles excuse me, of medians and more than 30 miles of boulevards. The medians you see across the country are just not about looks. Their plants and trees help improve air quality and absorb, absorb storm water. We work hard to provide good alternative driving. We are committed to provide safe streets for all the citizens, regardless of their preferred mode of transportation. In 06, we partnered with the Chicago Police Department, the Office of Mar Management and Communications, to launch Safe Streets for Chicago Traffic and Pedestrian Safety Program and that were aimed to reduce accidents. CDOC is also responsible for managing free trolley service that feeds Museum Campus, North Michigan Avenue, and Navy Pier. This service provides over two million riders yearly. I want to provide a quick look at some of our bigger projects currently underway. We have a construction budget of over more than $200 million annually the projects that involve every mode of transportation. The renovation of the Grand State Red Line substation is one of our largest current projects. CDOT is responsible for the reconstruction of all downtown transit stations. This is one of the first major overhaul of this station since it opened over 60 years ago. The new station will be larger and easier to enter and exit and is, the model, is modeled after the Red Line renovations that we have already done at Chicago Avenue and Lake Street. More impressive will be the use of the reversible gates to double the entering and exit capacity of the station. The new station will have all new granite floors and all new lighting system. Completed in 2010, the station will be a trophy of modern architecture to come, for years to come. This is a $67 million project. We have been paying close attention to traffic impacts in the area and working very closely with nearby property owners to minimize the impact of the construction. We've also worked very closely with Ron Uberman and the CTA. CTA tip, or CDOT typically has several major bridge reconstructions yearly. In 08, one of the more challenging bridge reconstruction projects is the Jackson Street Bridge. The bridge is located east of Michigan Avenue by the Art Institute. Whilst the structure itself is not complex, it's a location that has a challenge adjacent to Grant Park and the Taste of Chicago. The construction schedule is, is, uh, and sequencing excuse me, are also a challenge. The $11 million project is scheduled to open for the 08 Taste of Chicago. The, bid, the bridge will retain the architectural look of the old, but will serve the modern day needs. We recently began a project to build an underpass for the Lake Street, Lakefront Trail underneath Solidarity Drive on Museum Camp Campus next to the Adler Planetarium. Right now, there, there is a lot of conflict between vehicles and trail users, where the trail currently crosses Solidarity. This new underpass will increase safety and improve traffic. This is one of the mayor's ideas to address bike and pedestrian safety. The project also includes improvement to the museum campus drive circle 
and Buckingham parking or Burnham Harbor parking lot. As the, the Grand State Project, we have been working very closely with the museum campus, Park District, Soldiers Field, Northerly Island, and others to make sure that the construction and traffic go smoothly. A multi-year project is underway to realign US 41 south of 79th Street. US 41 is also known as South Shore, South Shore Drive. We currently are working on utility installations and, and site preparation. The roadway is scheduled to begin in 2010. Providing fully accessible infrastructure is a top goal of the department. Our ADA sidewalk pro program builds handicapped accessible ramps with detectable warning tiles at the edges. We have built more than 11,000 ramps since 07 at a cost of over $50 million. Mayor Daly has been recognized as a leader in the country for the ADA compliance. As I mentioned earlier, Mayor Daly has a, a, a national reputation of a green mayor. His efforts have been brought to the Department of Transportation and we expand them every year. Our Green Alley program has received national attention. Most green alleys use permeable po pavement, asphalt, concrete, or pavers that allows rainwater to drain into the ground instead of collecting in the storm sewer system. We also use what's called a high albedo pavement, which provides light colored surface that reflects sunlight instead of absorbing it. The Green Alley program has earned many accolades, including the 2007 Innovation Award from the Chicago Sun-Times. We also work closely with the Department of Environment and Susan McKenna, the commissioner is here with us today. As I mentioned earlier, our landscape, median, bike, and pedestrian programs help the environment as well. Later this year, we'll begin work on some large improvement projects. We're planning to build two walkways beneath Michigan and Wabash bridges. They will be built out 20 feet into the river. They will be the first part of the Wacker Drive River Walk. These two connections will create an uninterrupted river level walkway from Lake Michigan to State Street. We're currently in the bid stage of these projects and hope to start later this year. We have been pursuing funding to rebuild North South leg of, of Wacker Drive from Randolph to Congress Parkway. As with the east-west leg of Wacker, which was rebuilt in 01 and 02, our goal is to fix the roadway before any major issues develop. This is another example of our department being proactive instead of reactive. The 130th Torrance intersection is a major crossing near the Ford Supplier Manufacturing Campus. The improvement will separate the railroad tracks from the railroad, which will benefit train and vehicles. It will also benefit pedestrians and the neighborhood of the southeast side. As many of you saw a few months ago, Chicago has re received $153 million from the United States Department of Transportation for congestion relief projects, thanks to the leadership of our, our mayor. We're looking at three main areas, bus rapid transit, congestion pricing, truck loading zone pricing. We're in the early stages of development these, of these ideas, but our goal is to come up with initiatives that help ease congestion in this great city. CDOT will work closely with Ron Huberman of the CTA, the Office of Management and Communication, Frank Cruzy from our Washington DC office, and Paul Volpe, our CFO. We know it's complex, but the mayor is committed to improving public transit to address this congestion. It will bring us into the 21st century. That's what we're doing externally. Now I'd like to talk to you about what we're doing internally in this organization. One of the first things I did when I became commissioner was to update the department's mission statement. As you can see from the highlighted words, I wanted to focus on some basic but important themes. Effectively manage, safe and efficient, cost effective and timely, meets and exceeds department standards. These concepts also relate to our four core elements of the Office of Management Accountability, which I'll talk to you about in a moment. 
This mission applies not only to CDOT in-house construction, but also to our private contractors and our consulting firms. Two main concepts have always been important to me, accountability and the higher standard. A message I constantly give our members is that we are always accountable for the work that we do. We are striving to operate more like a business, the business of saving taxpayers money. Private companies make money, we're in business to save money. Mayor Daley asked me to reorganize the in-house construction division in May of 05. One of the first things I did was to create the Office of Management Accountability and my friend Tony Chiesa came along for the ride. The Office of Management Accountability is based on four core elements. Efficient utilization of human capital, effective allocation of material and equipment resources, adherence to procedures and documentations requirements, maximizing community involvement. CDOT has become customer driven. The citizens are our customers. Our asset, manage, our asset management command center tracks personnel and equipment involved in in-house operations daily. We now move all equipment in the evening in preparation for the next day. That, looks, that allows our crews to be at the job site at 7 a.m. This has led to a $3 million savings. Working with the unions to put a four to midnight shift up was a big step. It allows us to fuel, load trucks, move heavy equipment after 7 p.m. for a fresh start the next day. We're always looking ahead. We use biometric time clocks to have our employees swipe in and swipe out each day. Crews swipe in and swipe out at time clocks nearest the work site. There are 200 time clocks throughout the city, which we added to our mapping system. The old practice with some crews was that they would swipe in by their home and then travel to the work site. It was a lot of wasted time, and I worked to change that immediately. We also track nearly 400 units with GPS on cell phones, which include foremen and crews. We also track our vehicles by GPS. Here's an asset command center map showing a job site at 7 a.m. The purple square is the job site. Here's what you see of the job site after 7. You can see the foreman, two trucks have arrived at the location after swiping in at the closest time clock. All this information is provided in real time. The foreman picks out the closest clock, which is circled. The crew swipes in there and reports the work. Earlier this year, the mayor proclaimed the year of the pothole. <laughs> it's been a ride. It's been a long one. <laughs> to address the annual issue, in 2005, the Office of Management and Accountability developed a computerized mapping tracking system based on pothole reports to the city's 311 system. The, the purple dots represent 311 calls to potholes, and they're reported by our citizens. The tracking system lets us know where our crews are at all the time. It allows us to respond to emergency calls more efficiently. In the map, you can see the foreman is in the green spot, the truck is in the red spot, and the purple square ID the 311 potholes that were called in by our citizens. We have also made other improvements. We have developed new routing for crews based on police beats, which enables us to concentrate resources in a smaller geographical area. We use night and weekend crews in high traffic areas to allow us to repair potholes while not impeding traffic. We've coordinated repair efforts with the Illinois Department of Transportation and with suburbs adjacent to our city. To assist our crews, we developed a written policy outlining all procedures related to pothole repair. And we fully trained our foremen and crews on the proper techniques and practices. These systems have helped us work efficiently as possible. This past winter, as you know, among the worst in over a decade. We used more than 8,000 tons of material patch, double the amount of last winter. 
During the worst weeks of the winter, our 26 crews were filling more than 5,000 potholes a day. And believe me, they've worked very, very hard for us. As you can see by these two maps how things have changed since 05. The average number of potholes in the 311 system has dropped dramatically thanks to the improvements we put together. Obviously, you can see the map with all the purple dots on, from 05 on your left and on the right there is the, what we had in 07. The current number we have in our system this morning is 1,276. We know there's a whole lot more potholes out there, but in the 311 system that is customer driven, there's 1,276 left from what we started with and we've filled over 400,000 potholes this season. We've also made improvement in other areas. Street pavement markings used to take 180 days to complete. Now it's 30. Also, we now use thermoplastic material on our arterial streets instead of paint. The thermoplastic is heated and embedded into the pavement. It lasts longer than paint and requires less maintenance. We are now aiming to consistently higher standards in our construction product. When we began the Office of Management and Accountability, our first, deputy super, our first Deputy Commissioner, Tom Powers, gave us a vision statement, and I quote, our goal is to be internationally recognized as a leader in construction, maintenance, and enhancement of the modern urban environment. Tommy, you are right on the nose. Thank you. Here are some examples of unacceptable quality of work done by our contractors. Our OMA staff does site visits for compliance routinely. The sidewalk on the left, near a school. After the contractor <coughs> poured this new sidewalk, he failed to adequately shut off the construction area. You can see what happened. In the photo on the right, you can see how a contractor newly poured sidewalk actually created a tripping hazard because it didn't meet up to existing sidewalk. This is a liability and totally unacceptable. Here are examples of some work that should be done and currently is being done by our in-house construction and private vendors. Very, very nice. A funny story about this location. We were meeting with representatives from a utility company, explaining our new standards, and showed them this picture and how the work is supposed to be done. A lawyer with the company said that's not even the city of Chicago and that the work looks too good. <laughs> well, that made us look pretty good as a department to know that we raised our standards and we are providing the best quality and value to our citizens. Here's another before and after look at a site where we made a contractor fix subpar work. We also have developed street restoration guidelines for all our in-house crews and private contractors. We have signed agreements with Commonwealth Edison, People's Gas, thanks Desiree is here, and AT&T. And we have provided training on proper restoration procedures. People's Gas has even purchased 96 saws to do clean pavement cuts, thank you. Also, we have set up a remote permitting system that allows the utilities to per self-permit the work in a public way. Many other initiatives are underway. The IT Governance Council was created to review and approve all technology in initiatives based on value. It is designated to strategically align IT initiatives with the CDOT mission statement. The council includes representatives from CDOT and other department, city departments. We recently formed an internal audit of our payment process. The old process was cumbersome and delayed payment. We are now created a new uniform system to speed up the payment to our vendors. We are now deploying a mobile 311 unit to our public way inspectors. It allows real-time access to the 311 system to better service the customers. Hardy Bot, thank you very much. And we have set up a new inventory system for our sign shop, which launches this morning. It allows us to track inventory in real time and will reduce our materials and parts expenditures. Everything we're doing, 
we are doing transparently. All our vehicles are now have our website on the front and back of them vehicles. Our website is regularly updated with information on projects and programs. Since 05, we have made many positive changes and we're pleased with the results so far. But we realize there's still a lot of work to do and I'm committed to making more progress. As we move forward, we continue to be very transparent in our process. As often as I say at our staff meetings, we're like Avis, we try harder. Thank you, thank you for you, your time this afternoon. That they're written very neatly so I can understand them. Oh boy. People are writing, write very neatly <laughs> in print. Uh, board member jo Joy Saxton uh, asked a question which I think you answered, but you might want to expand on a little bit. Was she was asking about the hiring of independent contractors to help with road repairs since there's so much to do? You, do you hire independent contractors? That's Joyce's question. We hire independent contractors through the bid system, through uh, procurement. Oh. Then we have another question from Joyce. Aren't the plethora of new Streeterville high-rises putting too much strain on our sewer structure? Very interesting question. <laughs> we have the commissioners of uh, streets, uh, water and sewers here, but I'm... Uh, we work diligently to look at that. They're obviously out there all the time putting cameras in those sewers to look at what the infrastructure looks in down, down in the holes in the sewers and our, our storm system. And John Spatz does a great job doing that. Thank you. Okay, this one doesn't have a person's name on it, but it must be someone from your family. Normally I wouldn't ask a question without a name on it. But it's, so it says, will you sing Mac the Knife? Is that? <laughs> A family joke? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I, 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 I don't do that anymore. You don't do that anymore. <laughs> then we have a question from City Club board member Kathy Posner. You talked about the safe movement of vehicles, cyclists, and pedestrians. It seems to me that the majority of messenger cyclists pay no attention to the traffic laws. Why can't they be required to wear vests with numbers on them so we could turn them in when they break the traffic laws all the time? Yeah. Uh, that's a great um, suggestion and we'll certainly look at that, but we also have our public way inspectors in the public way and we are working obviously diligently with the Chicago Police Department from my other life that uh, we work with them diligently in regards to the public way. Does anyone else have any more questions? It was such a great speech, that's why you, people don't have questions because you covered absolutely everything Thanks. that anyone would want to uh, know about CDEP. Thank you. Oh, wait, before, before you walk away, you get some parting gifts which were all under the amount of money allowed by ethics, which is the Official City Club of Chicago mug, maybe three dollars, so we're good. <laughs> the City Club of Chicago hundred year history. And a one year membership to City Club. Thank you. Thank you. That gives us now one thousand and one members now that we've given uh, Mr. Byrne. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs>